Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, it is time for another Star Wars Metal Earth kit. This time we're reaching back a little bit older to the AT-ST, which is from Return of the Je Jedi, also known as the Chicken Walker. I think this is going to be a fun build, I think this will be a lot different. Looking forward to having this standing beside the AT-AT, so let's tear it open and see what's inside. The ATST, which unfortunately it's already been opened because my camera didn't start recording when I told it to. But inside we have the two metal sheets and the instructions. Page one of the instructions, as usual, has a drawing of the kit. A bit about insertion tabs and, and or insertion holes and tabs and folds. A bit about the needle-nose pliers being helpful. They certainly are. And the key. Circle means to bend tabs over 90 degrees. Triangle means to twist them 90 degrees. And down here you have the outline or the layout of the um, metal sheets. So you know which part is which. Also, some of them are colored. I love that they do that now. They color code parts that are the same, so that it's a lot easier. They number one of them, and it's a lot easier to find the other. There's no confusion with similar parts or circles that are slightly different sizes, which one is which. I'm loving that they do that now. And they even go so far as to putting this color in the instructions, which start on page two, or the assembly chart. We start with part one, two, three, and follow it. And down here you see part 12 has a color to it. So this is one of those pieces that is more than one of the same. And if we flip over, we've got page three and then four. Just follow on through. And we have the second sheet, five and six, seven and eight. Tools that I use for these kits. We have the ever so helpful tweezers. Use them a lot for twisting tabs, have a little bit of an angle on them that helps get into places. I have the Fascinations tool set with the long needle nose pliers, flat nose pliers, and clippers that are great for getting parts off of the sheets or trees or spruce. I have some long locking um, Kelly clamps, I think I've heard them called. They have several names, but they're great for holding on to parts. On the occasion, it's difficult to get something into place. I like to have some sort of dental type tool on hand to help bend and twist and get into tight areas. Sometimes the tab doesn't quite line up, but if you if you just kind of bump it over, I have several different objects for rounding and shaping parts. I've got these step mandrels. I've got wooden dowel rods. I've got beads and marbles. It all help in shaping things. I also have round nose pliers that help doing subtle small curves and shapes. And I like to have some sort of blade, not for cutting, but because it's narrow and it can get into areas and kind of pry things apart because sometimes that is necessary. So let's get started. Be careful with part 4. The metal is very thin. It would be best if you hold the thin metal with long nose pliers and bend the tabs over with your fingers. You want to hold it tight so the shape does not warp. I should have used the needle nose pliers to hold the center part before bending over the sides. The little area near the bottom warped just a little. I was not supposed to connect both sides just yet, only the one. I had to undo the right side later.
Part 9 is tricky. I use the end of a drill bit to shape it, but the problem is that there are two tabs that do not curve into shape with the rest of it, but instead bend outwards. With circular parts, I prefer to, if I can, put the tab into the slot while it's still on the drill bit or dowel rod and then bend the tab over with tweezers. I have taken two of my dowel rods and sharpened them in a pencil sharper. They are very handy in situations such as this. Sometimes it helps to put a small hook into the tab to get it to go into its slot, especially if there is an angle involved. I sometimes push tabs over with my fingernails. I found it helpful to bend the tabs up a little on part 12. Because of the two ends are end to end, it helps to get the tabs into its slot. I had to open the side back up. There were more parts to add and I had closed it too soon. I noticed that I had put the gun on the base the wrong way and had to take it off and redo it. I thought I had done it the right way, but this kind of shows you how easily it is to misunderstand the directions. It is good to double check. I usually have to go back over the ends of circular parts to curve them over and complete the circle.
I held the drill bit in the bin when I bent over the piece to help shape it. I accidentally put part 36 on the wrong side. There is one little tab that bends out from the sides that comes into play later. I only bent one side halfway here because I noticed that there was an insertion slot right along the fold. I waited until the part was on and secure before finishing the bend. One of the tabs was hidden. The only thing I could do was push it over with the tip of the pliers. In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality, I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build.
The other leg comes together much the same as the first. I had a lot of trouble getting part 65 in place and then I realized one of the other tabs was in the way. Once I bent that tab over, part 66 went on okay. I used a drill bit to try and curve the end of part 77, but I had to clean it up with nose ring pliers later. There was a small part on the top of the ATST that was partially covering the slots for the tabs to hold the back on. I had to push it over slightly and it did not want to move. The other side tab just would not go into place. After bending it over a few times trying, I just left it that way and continued on.
To bend the sides of the base over, I like to just push it against its flat table. They tend to be long, and even with needle nose pliers, they can easily warp. I used a marble to help shape the main part of the foot. The ATST is the build bone. It got more and more complicated. The legs are very detailed. There's a lot of little parts. It took a while to build it all, but it gave it great detail. The body, once everything was done, putting all the big pieces together, worried me at first. I didn't think I was going to get it. The back piece, one of the tabs, did not want to get into slot properly, did not want to sit there. One of the other pieces was in the way, but. I continued fighting with it. There's one tab on the front side that did not even go into place. I couldn't get it to. It kept bending, so I just let it bend, and I used the rest of the tabs to hold it on. Fortunately, there were enough other tabs to hold it together. I was concerned about one of the legs being a little looser than I liked, but once it was all put together and on the base, it's a nice sturdy kit. It's got a lot of nice detail. I am, of course, glad to add it to my collection. You do have to pay attention to what you're doing, as with any of the kits, there were a few times I put the pieces on backwards. I've learned not to twist the tabs so hard so that it's more easy to undo them and put them on correctly. It was a great build. I look forward to doing more Star Wars. I am just about got a complete set again until they come out with even more. I hope they come out with the Y-Wing. I very much want them to come out with the Y-Wing. But at any rate, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more and keep on keeping them.